Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the White Collar Players Immersive Mod Series. For our sixth episode, we bring some immersion to the settlement crafting system. This episode is a little bit longer than usual, so grab a cold beverage, prop up your feet, and enjoy the show. Armor and Weapons Keyword Community Resource, or AWKCR for short, is a framework created by Valdesil, Gambit77, and Andrew CX. Its purpose is to provide better keywords and thus a better sorting system for mod authors to use for their creations. These changes work mostly behind the scenes, but the mod is required by many authors who add clothing, weapons, or settlement items to the Commonwealth. If you are following our load order with your own, then pre-war binoculars, which we covered previously, needs to be reinstalled with the AWKCR option to accommodate it. Because we have all of the DLC installed, we chose the all DLC option to download, and we also installed the patcher optional file to provide compatibility for some other mods we have. For many other mods in today's collection, this framework is a requirement, but its adjustments to the way the game handles mods is a great benefit to players as well. OC Decorator by McFace and Evokian Knight essentially adds only two things to the game, but they allow for practically infinite possibilities. One is a new crafting bench, called the OC Dispenser, which is capable of taking any lootable item, which means anything that you can pick up and take into your inventory, and converting it to a static object, which is movable only with build mode, and you can even pick it back up. These static objects are unable to be knocked over by you, your companions, or any other type of force. This device alone allows for infinite decorative possibilities. However, instead of having to find all those items in the world and then using the device to convert them, the second part of this mod adds practically every decorative object in the game to the OC Decorator section of the Building Mode menu which is conveniently organized into subcategories. These items can be placed provided you already have the item in your inventory or the workbench. While this mod works practically flawlessly, because of game engine issues, there are some known limitations which are listed on the mod page and are important to keep in mind as you decorate your settlement. For our game, we chose the No Crafting Experience option when we installed the file, which applies only to OC Decorator items, therefore preventing overleveling while decorating your home. Great work by these two authors on this fantastic mod, which we believe is necessary for anybody wanting a true home on the wastes. OC Decorator pairs exceptionally well with Place Everywhere by the Lich. In fact, we would say it is a required mod if you are using OC Decorator. Place Everywhere allows you to place any item anywhere, no need to worry about red lines. However, if an item usually needs to be placed in water or dirt, those rules must be followed to help with both immersion and to avoid errors. Similarly, items must also be placed inside the boundaries of the settlement, but they can be placed so that they clip together which can be used to fix many issues such as with walls or doors. This mod certainly can be used in unimmersive and unrealistic ways to build floating settlements or things of that nature, but for our purposes, it can be used in a much more realistic manner, to place OC decorator items on bookshelves or to fix ground snapping problems. This mod also includes some fantastic additional controls over object placement which are assigned to hotkeys discussed on the mod page, such as precision rotation on every axis, size scaling, and precision translational movement on each axis as well. By following the instructions on the mod page, these hotkeys can be changed to your liking. Place Everywhere combines many features of different mods into one beautifully crafted add-on. Amazing work by the Lich, and we highly recommend this mod for any playthrough. Every default settlement in the Commonwealth has a maximum amount of placeable items. You can see how close you are to this limit by looking at the top of the screen for the bar that fills up as you build more structures. The purpose of this limit is to prevent the game from breaking and crashing when it tries to load all of this data at once. However, most PCs are capable of handling much more than the default limit is set to. This is where Settlements Expanded by Blue Sin comes in. This mod simply unlocks the limit on buildable objects. Once installed, simply approach the workbench you want to expand and open the console. Click on the workbench and make sure the correct ID pops up. You can check this by searching online for the ID of the settlement bench you want to unlock, then type in the command as it is shown here. Once this is done, you can open up the crafting menu and you will notice that the capacity bar is now empty, which shows that the command worked. No matter how much you build, this bar will always remain empty and you can construct freely. However, it is important to remember the original function of the settlement limit. Building too much can break your game, causing corrupted saves or even full crashes to the desktop. So be sure to save often and not go overboard with building unless you are confident your setup can handle it. Crafting Workbenches by Dr. Danzel adds three workbenches to the crafting section of the build menu. These benches look exactly like their vanilla counterparts, however they allow you to craft from scratch melee and ranged weapons, ammunition, regular armor and power armor, as well as some miscellaneous items. This new system also means that modded items can be crafted at these benches, provided there's a patch for it, instead of crafting them at a chemistry station. When installing with NMM, there are many different features to pick and choose. For our immersion-focused game, we selected the base mod which includes the crafting benches and elements pertaining to them. 
but we left out all of the optional add-ons in order to maintain realism. These add-ons can allow you to craft all power armor parts and all types of advanced weapons, which we feel would give too much of an advantage. However, we did choose the option which allows for traditional ammo crafting in a similar manner to that of Fallout New Vegas, which means that ballistic ammo requires the various components to craft it, i.e. the correct primers, casing, and slugs for the caliber you need, all of which require different ingredients to craft, so creating ammunition from scratch is both immersive and realistic. We also chose to add support for automatron and faction quests, which means that after certain milestones in these quest lines, some new items relating to the particular faction will be available to craft at these workbenches. We installed both the removed experience option, which helps to prevent overleveling from creating items, and the default interface for crafting, which ensures compatibility with other mods that use the crafting workbenches system. It is important to note that this mod requires AWKCR in order to function, and be sure to read the known issues section on the mod page before installing to be aware of the effects of this mod. The Fridge, by Not Sure 700 adds a very simple group of items to the build menu, while also adding a lot of immersion to any constructed home. The Fridge comes in either a wireless or wired variant. Naturally, we chose the wired option for realism. Powering the Fridge requires only one unit of electricity, and any warm Nuka-Cola, beer, or other beverage placed inside will be chilled down to ice cold after one in-game hour. The ice cold tag on beverages provides extra stat boosts and more importantly is much more refreshing after a long day of roaming the wastes. A great simple mod by Notcher700, and we look forward to having a functioning fridge in our game. Reasonable Workbench Perks by Freedom's Flame changes the perk requirements for crafting benches so that you don't have to be a rank 2 local leader with a charisma of 6 just to be able to cook your famous Mirelurk cakes. With this mod, each bench now requires level 2 of its respective perk. For example, creating a weapons modification bench requires rank 2 of Gun Nut. There is also an option to apply the same adjustments to constructing stores. However, we feel that in order to convince a merchant to sell and buy goods at your settlement, a requirement of rank 2 in local leader is pretty realistic, and you don't need to be a weapons expert to convince someone to set up a trader post. Great work by Freedom's Flame, and we highly recommend reasonable workbench perks for more immersive access to crafting benches. Immersive Scrapping by X Citrus overhauls the amount and variety of ingredients obtained from scrapping different objects around your settlement. With this mod installed, cars will have a wide variety of components to offer, as it would be, instead of just steel. This same logic applies to nearly all scrappable items, changing the types of materials they give back to reflect what they would realistically be made of. Immersive Scrapping is simple in function, but excels at bringing more realism to settlements in the Commonwealth. Craft Cooking Oil from Corn by 15 Spades accomplishes exactly what the title implies. Found under the Beverages section of a cooking station, this wonderfully simple mod allows you to create one unit of cooking oil from two pieces of corn. Each unit of cooking oil created provides three units of oil. This tiny mod adds an immersive and realistic way to craft oil which can otherwise be extremely difficult to find out in the wastes. To Cook a Cat by Samus Knight 2 k implements a recipe which is included in the lore of the Fallout world but appears to be absent in the Commonwealth. This mod adds two new options to the cooking station, the Cat Kebab, which provides a 5 minute plus 1 boost to agility, and the Cat Stew, which highlights living targets for 5 minutes. While no one wants to eat their feline companion, in a survival scenario, sometimes you have to make tough choices to stay alive. This little addition is perfect for bringing some forgotten lore back into the game. The default troughs for feeding your pack brahmin aren't really feeding troughs at all. Instead, they are just empty bathtubs. Real Troughs by Fading Signal fixes what Bethesda should not have even allowed into the final version of the game. This mod introduces new meshes and textures for the Brahmin feed troughs, which include actual food for your valuable livestock. This simple change is perfect to provide an even more realistic look to your trading posts. Far too many times to count, I have come across a nice cache of various useful items, but have simply not had the space to carry it all. Previously, I would have had to simply pick out my favorite items and move on with my travels, but now, thanks to King Gath and his mod Salvage Beacons, I no longer have to worry about such matters. Using the communication station, which can be found under the miscellaneous section of the resources tab in the building menu, my settlers are able to track salvage beacons I can leave in any container along with the salvage I want to keep, and eventually someone will come along to transport the cache back to the settlement of my choosing. The time it takes for my gear to arrive back home depends on how far away the cache is from the selected settlement. You can view all of your active salvage beacons locations by using the miscellaneous quest section of your Pip-Boy. These markers will go away after the stash has arrived. This mod immersively integrates exploration and resource gathering without slowing down the pace of the game. Provided I have enough beacons and a well-functioning settlement, I can traverse the commonwealth without ever making a transport run back home. An important note to remember is that the settlers will not take items from an owned container, meaning that they will not steal for you. So be sure that the container with both the loot and the beacon is fair game. This excellent mod is perfect for giving more purpose to settlers and adding immersion to scavenging in the wasteland. 
Snappable Junk Fences by Darth Wayne brings a fantastic change to the default junk fences provided in the build menu. With this mod, the junk fences will now snap together and close up any gaps previously left between them, making constructing barricades much easier and more effective. Great work by Darth Wayne for fixing this issue, but his contribution to immersive settlement construction doesn't end here. Wooden Prefabs Extended improves upon the two pre-constructed wooden shacks found in the wood prefab section of the build menu. This small mod adds support beams under the shacks so that they can be constructed on uneven surfaces. Pairing this mod with Place Anywhere allows you to have a ready-made home anywhere out in the Commonwealth. Yet another mod by Darth Wayne, Improved Shack Bridges adds snapping functionality to the items found in the Wood Bridges section of the building menu. These new snap nodes allow for the bridges to be snapped to floors, stairs, other bridges, etc. There are also snap points on the side of the bridges where you can connect railings for both aesthetic appeal and improved safety. This mod by Darth Wayne also adds two new bridges to this section which have the same snap points mentioned above and can be used for a wide variety of reasons. These bridges naturally pair well with wooden prefabs extended to create much more unique structures in your settlements. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our collection of mods for today. However, we do have a tip which you can use to add full building functionality to the home plate workbench in Diamond City. Simply open the console, click on the workbench, checking to make sure that the right ID pops up, and then enter the command as it is shown here. This workaround allows you to construct any item like you would normally be able to at any other settlement. So now you can use all the mods we discussed in this episode in home plate as well. We hope you all have enjoyed our show today, albeit a bit longer than usual, but please remember to leave an endorsement for any mod you download and enjoy. And if you like our channel's content, please consider subscribing to stay updated as we release new videos. Thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you back here for the next episode.